All the major news stories made simple and easy for your listening pleasure. We'll break it down for you in key words. For this segment, we're joined by Adam in the studio. Good morning. Well, good morning, Lena. We've right. made it through the week. We have. Yeah. We have. Do you think that's how the presidential candidates feel? We've made it through another week. No, that bit with that beginning week yeah. <laughs> beginning week their week is beginning is what yeah. I was going to say <laughs> yeah, yeah. It it's not even a week actually is it it's uh, less than a week less than a week now yeah, gosh it's quickly wow. approaching the presidential election yeah. uh, it seemed a bit distant uh, yeah about say a month ago or even up until like a couple of weeks ago but now yeah we've already reached it I would uh, like to yeah. remind our listeners because I was thinking why did February just zip by because yeah. there's only 28 days do you think that contributes uh, a little bit uh, no uh, yeah, yeah who cares <laughs> what is the point of this, this discussion anyway I don't know. <laughs> and I, something I don't agree with your point that anyone can be a photographer by the way because I am terrible ah. <laughs> even with my camera on my but phone I, but I guess the sentiment is if you're at the right yeah. place at the right time like the golden hour for example like you get yeah. like a it's not even an hour like 20 minutes to get the beautiful shot of a sunset if you're there yeah. you could yeah. be a photographer or I, not apparently I take the worst food photos ever so, you uh, do uh, thank oh. you for that <laughs> <laughs> wow it's, that was very quick I, because we were at the same restaurant <laughs> taking the same picture and I thought what's what's the difference the phone <laughs> oh gosh a conversation for another day sure sure <laughs> but you can actually give us your two cents do you think anyone can really take take a photography and be great at it. Maybe it's passion. Maybe you just want to eat more. Yeah. All right, let's stick with that. (laughs) Let's jump into our keyword news portion. As always, we're going to try to clarify some of the biggest headlines this morning, starting with our coverage of the presidential race. This is our first keyword of the day. Early voting. So early voting for the presidential election has kicked off. It's considered a crucial period that could reshape the outcome of the election for the country's next leader. So Mm. what should we know today? Yeah, so another election amid the pandemic, especially with six figures now in terms of daily cases. So it's very... uh, It's a very concerning and weary period for everyone, uh, but still, uh, there is an expectation that there are more people going to be voting this year. Uh, Mm. But despite the rapid surge in cases, um, uh, more um, not despite, with the rapid surge in Mm. cases, many more uh, voters are expected to actually cast their ballots in advance, of Mm. course, to avoid the crowds and minimize exposure to the virus on actual election day next Wednesday. So between today and tomorrow, perhaps more people. That's right, yeah. So uh, early voting began at 6 a.m., so the polls are already open for two hours now. It will run until 6 in the evening. The same hours apply tomorrow. Uh, Early voters can cast their ballots anywhere and don't really need to register in advance. Mm -hmm. Uh, You don't have to be in your own uh, district. District. Yeah, just go if you're wherever Mm -hmm. uh, you are, you can Mm -hmm. just uh, vote, Mm -hmm. walk in. Uh, All you need is a photo ID, of Mm -hmm. course. Uh, Locations of polling stations are available online, so Mm -hmm. you can search where your nearest one is. Mm -hmm. Uh, COVID patients or those in quarantine can walk in or take taxis or ambulance provided by local offices to the polling stations to vote in isolated booths, of course, Mm. to stay away from everyone else. Uh, They are allocated an hour at the end tomorrow. So not today. They'll be allocated an hour after tomorrow. So maybe between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. tomorrow, right? That's right. Uh, If they don't vote tomorrow, then they have an hour and a half extra on Wednesday. That's after the polls close, of course. Um, Election workers are also staying vigilant. They've been deployed in protective equipment, including full body uh, hazmat suits as well Mm. uh, for some. Uh, Voters will spray hand sanitizers, wear gloves before casting, pictures Mm. uh, 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 measures that were in place in previous elections as well. Um, The main presidential candidates are also expected to cast their ballots today. Uh, Lee Zemyong, for instance, will go to Chungo District uh, at 8.40 p.m., so in half an hour's time. Mm. Yun Song 8.40 a.m. 8.40 a.m., yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yun Song Yeol is uh, voting in Busan. He's down in Busan, yeah. uh, and he'll be voting at around 9 a.m. Shim Sang Jong was an early bird. She mm. actually already cast her ballot about an hour ago. She was an early bird, <laughs> yeah. indeed. Uh, meanwhile, we didn't mention An Su there, right? Uh, mm. The opposition camp has decided to feel a unified candidate, as we talked about in a, such a lively fashion mm. on uh, Adam's segment yesterday. Yeah. The race has become actually even more unpredictable. Yeah. There's no guarantee that all Antarctic supporters will support the Conservative Party. That's right. I mean, there are uh, differing opinions right. uh, and different polls that have been released yesterday because we can't report on polls that uh, are conducted from today. Sure. Uh, but we can report on past ones. Uh, there are several polls, including one by Real Meter, which have the two front runners, Lee Jae-myung and Yoon Song-yeol, neck and neck pretty much. A global research poll 
uh, commissioned by JTBC, shows E trailing Yoon by 36.6% to 42.3. That's 5.7 percentage point deficit, but it's still within the margin of error, which mm. is said to be 5.9 percentage points. One by Embrain Public shows 45.9% for Yoon and 45 for E, so pretty much the same. Mm. Uh, since the merger of the opposition candidate, other polls have shown varying results, however. It's been quite volatile. Interestingly, and po- after Anne pulled out, mm. 31.2% of his supporters actually endorsed E, mm. which is two percentage points more than who went to Yoon. Uh, eight and a half of them actually shifted their support to Shim Sang Jung as well. So that was an interesting uh, mm. Mm. Uh, uh, turn of events there. Sure, it's kind of unexpected, but right. I suppose those who wanted to see a disruption in the bipartisan system, they yeah. would want to support a, a minor candidate. Possibly. Right? Uh, but there is a, a poll by Kanta Korea uh, that was conducted between February 27th and March 1st. Sure. It shows that 49% are actually in favor of Yoon winning if a merger was done. Um, of course, that poll was conducted before a decision was made. Mm. For E, it was 38.3%, which is a 107 point percentage point difference so mm-hmm. uh, again that tells a, a different story basically it's hard to tell <laughs> <laughs> it's what i'm trying to say which no is, one knows which is probably <laughs> not what the public wants to hear right yeah. they turn to these uh well many differing measuring sticks to gauge mm. where the, <laughs> the election well, is headed i'd like to say don't uh, conform to public opinion about one candidate if there's a candidate that you like and the policies you agree with then stick with that person yeah such no, a clear basics in yeah. democracy, but thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's hard, I know, but uh, it yeah, it's, it's, it's good to be a bit uh, objective in these cases, right? All yeah. right. So, you know, we were given all these uh, pamphlets as to what the policies for each mm-hmm. candidate's war. Maybe go through it before going to the polls today yeah. and make your decisions based on that. Mm-hmm. On to our second keyword of the day. Eased restrictions likely. A turn to the pandemic, uh, the government is likely to announce an uh, ease set of social distancing measures today. Um, it's just a little bit of an alleviation, but what mm-hmm. can we expect? Yeah, so not much of a difference. Sure. Uh, but the government says it sees that the efficiency of toughening the social distancing rules is quite low at the moment. They're saying that because, of course, cases are uh, above 200,000 again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they are still weary of the rise in Omicron cases. So um, it is a small adjustment. Now, mm-hmm. the likely outcome at the moment is keeping the gathering cap at 6 mm. but keeping business hours open till 11 p.m. Mm. So the only real change there is the one hour extension to that business okay. curfew. Um, and of course this is all to help uh, small merchants hit by these restrictions. Mm. Uh, the, uh, uh, the measures will be announced today and will take effect from tomorrow. All right that's what's expected as of now. On yep. to our third keyword of the day. Strong economic outlook. This is all despite economic hardship from the pandemic. Korea has mm. been found to have been the third strongest economy in the OECD during mm. these difficult times. Tell yeah. us the details. Yeah, so the Kolon Institute uh, for Economic Research released a report on who were the winners and losers during the two-year period of the pandemic. That's and, uh, not how they named it, is it? Uh, uh, That's well, what <laughs> media outlets are saying. Yeah. <laughs> right. and, uh, yeah, it's pretty much the name of the uh, report. Mm. But uh, they collected various economic indicators, such as GDP growth, inflation, mm. household income, etc. It turns out Korea was in third place out of 19 member states after Denmark and Sweden. Uh, more than half of the countries actually had positive GDP growth. So it wasn't a complete dire picture, but the amount of rise between the countries, of course, uh, differed greatly. Mm. Uh, Denmark's GDP rose the largest by 5.2 percentage points. Mm. Korea also did well, thanks to strong imports, but it seems that we can't beat North <laughs> European countries. Mm. Uh, uh, they always seem to be at the top of these kind of lists, aren't they? We could go of... on about that for an entire hour, actually, <laughs> right. as to what, how their government system actually differs, yeah. how much tax they pay. It, but this could really go on. It's not an individual con- uh, country mm-hmm. as well. It's mm-hmm. all collectively Denmark, Norway, Finland, mm-hmm. Sweden, mm-hmm. the Nor- yeah, mm-hmm. the Nordic countries. They mm-hmm. do so well. Mm. We did a, a podcast special on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll tune into that when I have the time. Um, yeah. And all, the, all of this is, uh, yeah. for Korea anyway, is uh, thanks to uh, strong imports. Yeah. Interestingly, Spain and Germany, uh, often considered strong economies, were at the bottom of the list uh, this time. Mm. Basically, the Institute said countries that dealt with the initial stages of the pandemic actually uh, did well economically. Mm. So uh, it seemed that the initial... Um, uh, countermeasures for mm. the virus mm. uh, that Korea was praised for in the beginning mm. uh, did quite well. All right. Yeah. On to our fourth keyword of the day. 
changing skyline. Is it for the better or are we not sure? That's a big question. Mm. Now, Seoul's skyline is expected to undergo a sweeping change after a height limit for residential buildings it will mm. be scrapped. So there's plans to scrap it altogether. That's right. Uh, and it's actually this cap is a decades-long height mm. limit, in fact, that the city government uh, had announced to abolish. Now, the mm. capital has capped the height of general residential buildings, uh, including apartments, at 35 floors since 2014. Mm. That was under the rule of the former and late Mayor Park won Sun. And in a policy turnaround, however, the city government, which is now led by Oh se says it will do away with the residential building height to induce colourful skylines, in their words. <laughs> uh, and this is all part of the so-called uh, 2040 Seoul plan, this basically this urban redevelopment project. And Mayor Oh yeah, yeah. had previously not been shy about the sort of like a Seoul renaissance, if you will, yeah. beautifying Seoul. And yeah. this is kind of in line with that too. Mm-hmm. Also to address residential issues in the crowded capital city as well. That's right. Uh, and the the city uh, government said it will also permit various apartment floor heights mm. uh, according to the conditions of each district to help diversify the capital's cityscape. Uh, it said it will also pursue the what's known as beyond zoning policy to change the paradigm of urban planning mm. in favour of a mix among its residential, commercial, industrial and green areas. Now, this basically means that a person can live, work, eat, shop and enjoy green spaces and fresh air if there is such thing in Seoul, <laughs> within a 30-minute walking radius. So basically more greenery in kind of commercial and residential areas. We're trying to help it where it can be helped. Yeah. I mean, you see Manhattan. It is one of the most <laughs> dense city in the world, yeah. yet it has Central Park in the middle. Yeah. That makes it a little bit better, right? Yeah, so more greenery might help with it. Maybe. Uh, we'll have to see. Mm. But uh, yeah, and the city government will also push a step-by-step process mm. of urban railways that currently cover... At, uh, just over 105 uh, square kilometers underground, as mm. well as other transportation changing policies as well. All right, on to our fifth keyword of the day. Emergency funds. The government says it will provide emergency funds worth up to 2 trillion won to businesses impacted by the war in Ukraine. Mm, that's right. Uh, this is to help, of course, export-oriented businesses and even import, for that matter, that deal mostly with Ukraine and Russia. Uh, the government will also draw up a detailed list of companies involved in trade with the two nations and some customized measures and detailed measures for them. Uh, alongside measures, these are usually for uh, the major conglomerates that deal with these companies, but the uh, these uh, countries. But the finance ministry is working on offering support to SMEs in kind of a separate manner. Mm. Uh, the aid packages for SMEs will actually be unveiled in the coming days. So they're still eyeing out the details on that. Uh, apart from the Ukraine-Russian war, there are uh, global common risks as well, um, including interest rate hikes in major countries uh, and the spike in crude oil prices as factors that could aggravate uh, mm. downside risks on the local capital market on top of that conflict. Uh, between Ukraine and Russia. Uh, Now, the government therefore says it will also bolster management of liquidity in foreign currencies held by financial service firms by operating contingency plans for 24 hours a day, of course, Mm -hmm. because with the ruble and other currencies, the foreign exchange market globally has become Mm -hmm. very volatile. Which brings us to our last keyword of the day. Ruble tumbles. Um, Putin's Achilles heel, if you will. Mm. Russia's ruble slid further, hitting record lows, and its credit rating has also been downgraded drastically. Uh, what's yeah. the latest, Adam? Yeah, so it seems like these economic sanctions are certainly hitting hard uh, within a short space of time. Uh, Fitch and Moody's downgraded uh, Russia's sovereign debt to junk status, mm. citing the impact of Western sanctions. Uh, Fitch said that US and European uh, Union sanctions prohibiting any transactions with the Bank of Russia uh, could have a much larger impact on Russia's credit fundamentals than any uh, previous um, sanctions. Moody's said the severity of sanctions have gone beyond Moody's initial expectations and will have uh, material credit implications. And S&P actually lowered uh, Russia's rating to sub-investment grade last week as well. Um, now, in going back to the currency, in the morning trading, the ruble was more than 10% weaker against the dollar at 117 and a half on the Moscow exchange on Thursday. It marks the first time the ruble has actually traded above 110 to the greenback in Moscow. Mm. Um, and stock markets still remain closed. Mm. Thank you very much, Adam, for today's coverage. Have a safe weekend. You too. We'll see you next week. See you next week. 
If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.